Hello everyone, today I'm going to be teaching you how to make Star 1 Defense. Star 1 Defense is an asteroid-like game with a couple extra features. So I'll go through and I'll show you some of the stuff. So we have three different unique game modes, and in the game modes uh, we have different power-ups that we can collect, and the room is infinite, and we also have a score system, and we have asteroids, and we have a death system. So I'm going to show you guys how I did all of this in this short video series. All of the assets are available for $1 on itch.io, the link is in description, or you can draw them. I would recommend drawing them yourself, but if you're just focused on the programming side, I do have all my assets available for $1. Let's get started. So to start off, we're going to open up Game Maker Studio 2. Now I do have the, the very basic Windows version and it does allow me more features. I believe it is available for $40 at time of recording on Yo-Yo Games uh, website and I would certainly recommend the full version. Uh, even if you're just a hobbyist like myself, it gives you access to so many more features. So we're gonna start and we're gonna open up Game Maker and we're gonna choose Game Maker Language and we're just gonna name this uh, YouTube Project. Um, and once it creates it, so to start, we're going to check all our rooms. We're going to make sure everything loaded correctly, which it looks like it did. And we are going to start by adding some sprites. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple sprites, and I'll get back with you guys in a second. All right, so now that we have imported our sprites, we're going to go ahead and set the origin for a couple of them, as well as the collision masks. Now, the origin for the ships does matter for mine. Uh, I have it set to 91 and 101, and it's not exactly centered, but it's it's close enough that uh, it, it works. So I have 91 and 101, and we're going to set whatever origin you set on your main ship sprite. We also need to set on the movement sprite. So we're going to set 91 and 101 here. Now, on the star sprite, it does not matter uh, where the origin is, because we're not really interacting with the star sprite so this doesn't really matter so this origin can be wherever you would like it uh so we're going to go back up to the uh ship idle sprite and we're going to change the collision mask so to get there you're just going to click right here on uh, collision mask and so we're going to click on it and we're going to change uh we're going to keep this on automatic but we're going to change the type we're going to go with uh precise per frame so what that's going to do is every single frame it's going to adjust the collision mask and so this way if uh, an asteroid comes it can just barely miss our player here. It's not just going to kind of hit a, a box, a collision box around it, instead it can kind of just narrowly miss us. And then we're going to do the same for the movement sprite uh, if you have one. Alright so now we've set the collisions on both of these. The collision mask on your star sprite does not matter um, because we're not, again, we're not really interacting with it. It's just a part of the background. So we're going to go into the room and what I have my room set to is 1024 by 1024. Uh, you edit that in the bottom left here. And since we're in space, I keep the background black and later we're going to make this full screen. Uh, so it doesn't matter too much what you set it to, but I find this gives the player a good amount of visibility on the tops and bottoms of their screen. But obviously, it will vary per machine. So what we're going to do now is... Oh, I didn't mean to open that. We're going to go back to our workspace, and we're going to create an object. Now, I'm going to call this Ship Idle Object. And we're going to attach the Ship Idle Sprite. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to add a couple of events. So to start off, we're going to add a step event. And within the step event, we're going to delete all this because this is just comments that just kind of don't really matter. So within the step event, we're going to do instance position. And we're going to set it to 0, 0. And then we have to set the object, which is our ship idle object. Now what this does is this sets our position to the center of the screen no matter where it is, and this prevents any glitches where the object might be moved around. This will keep it, keep resetting its position to zero, zero. You can have this in the create event, but I find it generally works better in our example in the step event. So what we're going to go through now is we're also going to add a couple of uh, movements. 
So the movement in our example, we are not moving the player. We will be moving the background, but the player will be staying stationary. So we obviously want an animation still. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do if keyboard check uh, and then ord D. So this is if the player hits the D key, we're gonna do an enter, enter. And we're going to put if is dead equals false, which is a variable that we will set in the create event in a minute. Um, and we're gonna hit enter here. And we're going to do, we're going to change the sprite index to ship movement sprite. So that every time the D key is hit, the sprite will change to the movement sprite. Now we don't want to actually move this object as it's going to stay in the middle of the screen the entire time. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to copy and paste this for all of the keys. I'm using WASD to move my ship. Uh, so we're going to be putting in W, A, S, and D. So now that we have all of our sprite indexes and our keys set so that every time you, you press a key, it'll change your sprite, we also need to do if you release that key. And so we are going to do if keyboard check released, and then we're going to have to go through and we're going to start again, and we're going to do it in the same order. Uh, oh, I missed a rotation and we're going to do it in the same order so that throughout our process we can kind of keep things somewhat organized. So we're going to have if is dead equals false and we're going to go through and we're just going to add sprite index equals ship idle sprite. Now this code is very simple. Um, there are many ways to do this, but this is the way that I prefer to do it. Every coder will do the same problem a little bit differently. Uh, so I think it's best to find what style fits you. I know I do my variables a little bit different than most people. I prefer to set my variables like this instead of like um, with a capital instead of with an underscore because I find a lot of game makers variables are with underscores. So I prefer to do it like this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the create event and we're going to set is dead so we don't get any errors. And this is a variable that we'll play with later uh, when we have collisions with asteroids. So it's basically setting, you know, if the player is still alive, what are we gonna do? So we're gonna go into our room and we're gonna add our object. Uh, you can try and get it close to center, but since we have it checking where it is, it doesn't matter if it's not completely centered. Uh, and so now we're going to go and we're going to make a placeholder object. Now this placeholder object is pretty important. Uh, it will hold a lot of our variables that are created throughout the game. So it, it we kind of can keep all our stuff in one place and it's not scattered throughout. So if we need to change things, we can really easily. So we're gonna go into a create event and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do global.gofast equals 17. And so this will be how quickly our background moves. So it'll give the sense of how quickly our um, stars are going to move around and it will be how quickly our sprites and all that and our, our, our background moves. So this is basically setting the speed of your ship idle object even though it's not moving. We're going to have our star sprite move. So we're going to make a, we're going to make a star object. And we're going to just do star one object for now. And we're going to set the star sprite as the sprite. And we are going to create a step event. So within this step event, what we're going to do is we're going to do if keyboard check. Oh, not that. Check. Uh, ord. And then D. And then curly brackets and then we're going to have x minus equals global dot go fast and so the reason why we have it set to a variable instead of a number is that if we need to change the speed we can easily do so already so now that we have that we're just going to copy and paste for all the keys and we're going to make minor adjustments so if we have a we're going to have this as plus and then we're going to set it for W. We're going to change this to a Y 
And then I believe it's still plus, so we may have to test that out. And we're going to put that as ice. Now, we're going to put a couple of these just scattered throughout the game. Later, we'll be spawning them in. But for now, this will give us a kind of test to figure out what's going on in our game. All right, so once we have a couple of these in, we're going to go ahead and hit F5, which will compile the game, and it will run it, and it will come up in a little window so that we're able to kind of test what we just did. And we got an error because we did not set we did not set uh, global.go fast. So what I believe happened here? Oh, we forgot to put in the placeholder object. That was my bad. Uh, and if it still gives us an error, it's because the placeholder object is at the bottom. We may have to move that to the top of the. Oh no, we don't. Okay, so for now, uh, oh both. I forgot to change the. Uh, this to y minus whoops so we're gonna go ahead and compile it again so a couple errors but that's to be expected in any game that you're gonna have to test and try things out and they might not always work there we go so now we have our our character doesn't follow our mouse yet but we do have the background that moves and we do have it that when we press a key it'll change sprites and then when we release the key it'll go back so this is very basic some very basic uh player movements and we will be adding on to this in the next episode. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. I will be publishing all the code, which should be in a link in the description. So if you're having any issues, you can go and copy and paste it. I would recommend trying and typing things in and trying bug fixing on yourself if you're a beginner. But if you're experienced and you really can't figure out what's going wrong, just check out my code and I'll, I'll put it all and I'll try and detail it all in the description in a probably in a google docs that i'll share with everybody i have a twitter and a discord both are great ways of contacting me if you want these assets they're available for one dollar on itch.io and it supports the channel and supports me thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next episode